so let's talk about blood clots. Um, so anyway, uh, blood clots are a fun topic. Um, everybody's worried about them, including healthcare providers. This is a large reason why you'll see that um, healthcare providers in general are kind of timid about prescribing uh, hormone therapy, even to cisgender people, you know, uh, much less transgender people. Uh, so, you know, if uh, postmenopausal or, you know, premenopausal or intramenopausal, anyway, a menopausal, a uh, cisgender woman goes to their doc and says, hey, I'm having all these symptoms, I'd really like to do some hormone therapy and get it under control. A lot of times they are told that it's super scary and you're just gonna get breast cancer and you're gonna get blood clots. Ah. Anyways, um, a lot of this is getting blown out of proportion, really, and um, I'll just be kind and call it an abundance of caution on the healthcare provider's part causes them to react this way. Um, in the case of trans people, it's unfamiliarity with, uh, with trans medicine a lot of times is what scares them away uh, from providing uh, hormone therapy. Uh, that and, you know, I live in the Southeast US, so um, bigotry <laughs> uh, and ignorance is a huge part of this as well. Um, but anyway, so back to blood clots. So blood clots are a worrisome thing, but how worrisome are they? Um, really and truly not <laughs> as much as people blow it out of proportion and make it sound like. like. You would think that with what some people say that if you go on hormone therapy, oh, you're gonna have like, uh, you know, one out of four chance of coming up with a blood clot. That's not even anywhere close to the exceedingly low risk of blood clots. Um, and to be clear, this is not to like poo-poo and say that there is no risk from uh, blood clots, but it's just that it's so much lower than what it's purported to be um, as kind of like a scare factor or gatekeeping factor here uh, for trans medicine. Um, so, and also, you know, while I am talking mainly about like trans feminine um, stuff like going on estrogen therapy, this could also, the numbers I quote, can also apply and the assessment can also apply to trans masculine people going on testosterone in that um, the numbers that I quote are going to be either the same or lower uh, of risk for blood clots than those of their trans feminine counterparts. So just know that, you know, your risk is not going to be like higher than the numbers that I state, um, but I'm pretty much like spearheading and focusing on the trans feminine ones because uh, that's where most of like the scare factor comes from is estrogen therapy. Anyway, so moving on, what what is the actual risk? So. A lot of things got to go into assessing this. I know it's. I'm not trying to delay telling you. It's just that there's a lot that goes into the numbers. Um, you can look up studies and like. There's all kinds of numbers they'll throw out there. Not really easy to read. You know, they'll say stuff like, "Oh, uh, trans masculine people had a 42 incidents in 10,000 patient years or whatever," and it's like the hell does that even mean, right? Um, anyway, so, <laughs> and then some studies are put out by people who are deliberately trying to like fluff the numbers up and make it look extra scary. Uh, anyway, so um, regarding risks, so whenever I'm putting someone on hormone therapy, you know, we're gonna assess their risk factors, you know, because hormone therapy is, you know, going to be a risk factor, of course. Um, but it's just going to add in to their other risk factors. So if you had zero other risk factors other than you're alive and you're a person, <laughs> um, so you're alive, you're a person, uh, you're reasonably young and healthy, um, your risk when you go on estrogen therapy is going to fall somewhere between like 0.1 and 0.3 percent, which is going to put you around about a similar risk for a cisgender woman who's just sitting there existing. So it's like taking your assigned male at birth risk factor for blood clots and then putting a uh, assigned female at birth 
risk factor on you about. Um, so it's not like giving you some kind of astronomically higher rate than cisgender people, although in some cases, yes, it might be a little bit higher than cisgender women. Um, but <laughs> it, it's also 0.1 to 0.3 percent or so. Even if you say as high as 0.5 percent, we're still talking about pieces of a percent, you know. Uh, in medicine, most of the time, uh, what would be considered clinically significant is something that approaches or surpasses 1%. Um, and so this isn't even like approaching a 1% margin. And again, I'm not saying, you know, that there's no risk because clearly there is. I mean, a 0.1 to 0.3 risk is still a risk, you know. Some people out there will still have uh, a, a DVT or blood clot. Um, but it's not like the everybody's keeling over dying uh, risk factor that uh, seems to be purported out there. Uh, so anyway, whenever I'm looking into putting someone on hormone therapy, some of the things that I am assessing or looking for um, on top of their regular, you know, getting on estrogen risk factor for blood clots would be do they smoke, particularly smoking like cigarettes. Um, it's kind of unknown. Uh, what vaping will add to it. Personally, I say be super cautious and just treat vaping as the same risk factor since it's just not known right now. Um, but uh, anyway, so do they smoke? Um, are they overweight? Are they sedentary? Are they... <laughs> I just feel like I'm describing myself. Anyway, um, and then... <laughs> <laughs> do they have um, comorbidities? So comorbidities are just health problems that you also have going on concurrently while you're on hormone therapy. So if you have health problems such as um, HIV or high blood pressure or you know maybe a history of stroke or blood clots that you've had in the past or you know any other kind of thing that involves the cardiovascular system over the long term or maybe you have a condition that in and of itself doesn't affect the cardiovascular system but what it does is it causes you to be on medication that could make it easier for you to have you know a dvt or blood clot or something like that um what is your age in general um you're gonna have a, a higher risk for blood clots as you age and you know we look at age 35 to 40 or so after you're over that age you have a uh, somewhat higher blood clot risk than someone who is under that age um, so you know age health medications smoking um, body habitus uh, activity level all of these things are going to feed into what your overall risk is for blood clots and I mean if you had every single one of those obviously you're gonna have a much higher risk just at baseline without even adding hormone therapy to it and then when you add hormone therapy to it whatever your risk is let's say you had a one and a half percent risk at baseline and then you add hormone therapy to it so that's 0.1 to 0.3 percent so now you have instead of 1.5 potentially up to 1.8 percent that's still an increase now we're creeping up on two percent occurrence right here okay um but anyway as you can see it's a lot more complicated than just you go on hormone therapy and you get a blood clot or something like that um and certainly you can help modify some of those risks you can't really modify your age <laughs> but i mean modify your activity level your health you know make sure you're taking your medicines as you should or if you're on medicines that maybe aren't needed anymore maybe ask your provider hey can i get off of these because i don't really feel like taking medicine that i don't need um, that happens a lot in the healthcare field people get left on medicines for years that they don't need anymore um but you know so things like that you can help kind of modify uh you know besides age <laughs> age a little bit difficult too and if you're going on hormone therapy <laughs> nobody wants you to modify hormone therapy by not going on it so that's not really a question uh and then if you're really concerned uh, you know certain forms of estrogen are considered higher risk than others um back in the day used to um 
you would see prescribed a lot of ethanol estradiol. And this is the one that in the studies caused by far the most uh, incidences of blood clots in cisgender women uh, who were on birth control with it in it. Unfortunately, that estrogen is still in birth control pills. <sighs> anyway, um, <laughs> but the estrogen that we now use for people who are like menopausal or for people who are uh, trans and need to transition feminine, uh, are no longer ethanol estradiol or if you're out there using ethanol estradiol I really urge you to ask your provider what the hell they're doing um, anyway so we're using a different form of estradiol now uh, oral pill form um, was how that previous one came and then you know there's not a lot of head-to-head -head studies that compare uh, blood clot rates and success rates or anything uh, between like pills, injections, patches, like all the estrogen choices, there's not really head-to-head -head trials. Um, there are some comparisons of blood clot rates between pills and patches, and it does seem that patches come out on top so that, uh, you know, they might have a, a, a smaller risk uh, of blood clots. It's likely because whenever you take estrogen pills, uh, you're going to activate the coagulation pathways and things uh, from the liver, uh, which is how you then increase uh, your clot risk. Uh, so by avoiding the liver, by applying it topically and absorbing it through the skin, you don't activate those pathways. Um, there's not a comparison there for injections, but one could kind of extrapolate uh, the information from the patches being superior then to pills when it comes to clot risk uh, in that injections also bypass the liver so theoretically it seems like they would also fall into the safer category as far as blood clots go um, but anyway so that's another kind of modifiable risk factor is what type of estrogen therapy you go on you know topical such as patches creams and injectables seem like you know they could be somewhat lower risk whereas the oral pill forms are somewhat higher risk than those likely because of the whole liver issue um, but then other things are not really modifiable such as what type of hormone therapy you're on and what your age is um, but anyway so all of that's good stuff to talk about with your healthcare provider uh, before getting started or if you're already started then talk to them about it um, but you know like I said if you uh, if you have a history of blood clot or stroke or something like that this is not a contraindication to getting on hormone therapy it's just something we need to know um, you know so that we can help plan ahead if someone has a history of blood clots or strokes, then I'm probably going to recommend that they not do pills uh, and that they either do topical or injectable forms of estrogen just to have that safer uh, profile for the risk of blood clots, you know, just as an example. But, uh, but anyway, so yeah. Um, so potentially whatever your risk profile is at baseline, you're gonna be adding somewhere around 0.1 to 0.3% for uh, blood clot risk. And uh, while that is not, you know, a completely insignificant number, it's also much lower than, uh, than you know, what the scare tactic people and gatekeepers try to represent. Uh, anyway, I hope this information helps folks because I know there's some folks out there that uh, have put off getting on hormone therapy because they're either scared to talk about a healthcare or talk to their healthcare provider about this stuff because they just figure, well, I'll just be shot down because. I've had a blood clot in the past or I'm so scared of getting blood clots that I just know it's going to happen or whatever. I hope this helps and um, if you got any questions, you know, definitely talk to your healthcare provider first. I, I just, people will write to me sometimes and I'm like, you really ought to discuss that with your care provider because if they're not aware of some of the things that you're thinking or doing, they're not going to be able to help you. Anyways, um, y'all have a good day and uh, take care. Be safe. Bye.